Hey, what's up everyone? And welcome to part two of my Logic Pro 11 Mixing Fundamentals course. In this video, we're going to set up our mix by creating a new Logic project. We're going to set the sample rate and tempo and then import the multi-tracks of the song into our Logic project. We'll also talk about volume levels, we'll add markers, we'll add our vocal multi-tracks to take folders, we'll do a rough edit, and we'll do a rough level and pan mix. Now, while I will be posting this entire course to YouTube, if you want to purchase the course, you can head over to logicproguide.com, which will get you full access to the course materials, so you can download all of the tutorials ad-free, and you can also get access to the multi-tracks that we'll be using throughout the course. And it also includes demo projects for each tutorial in the course. Okay, so I've got a brand new Logic project pulled up here. I'm just gonna create one audio track for now. That's not really going to matter. We're gonna import the multi-tracks in and create new tracks for each of those multi-tracks. But one thing I wanna do is I wanna check the sample rate. So I'm gonna go up to File, Project Settings, and then we'll go to Audio. And right here, you can change your sample rate. Now, the multi-tracks for this song are already at 48K. So before you import those files, I recommend setting the sample rate to match the multi-tracks. However, if you don't, if you're working in 44.1 or some other sample rate, when you drag in those multi-tracks, Logic will ask you if you want to convert the files or change the project's sample rate. So you're gonna to wanna to change the project's sample rate to match that of the multi-tracks. And I highly recommend that you just mix at the same sample rate that the multi-tracks were recorded at. So we're gonna go with 48K for this. And then we're gonna save the project. So I'll go up to File, Save As, or you can press Shift-Command-S. I'm going to save my project here. You can see I've got my multi-tracks in here as well. And you can choose between saving as a package or a folder. For this course, I'm just going to save the entire mix as a single folder, and then I'll make different versions of the mix for each of the tutorials in the course. If you're going to be working with a collaborator back and forth, it can be helpful to use a package because everything is stored in one file. But for mixing, I generally find that I like to work in a folder because it gives me easy access to all of the audio files in the project, the bounces, and other things like that. Now, normally you would want to copy your audio files into the project. I'm not going to do that just because I have the multi-tracks right here. So I'm just gonna give this a name. The song is called Now That You're Sober, and I'll just call this Mix. Okay, so here's our Logic Project folder. And again, you can see the Logic file inside of here. These are gonna be relatively small because in a folder layout, you don't have all of those audio files embedded or stored inside of the .logicx file itself. So what this does is it makes it really easy to copy and paste and make different versions of the mix, version two, version three, version four, et cetera. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that copy for now and we're gonna load everything up in here. Let's go back, here are the multi-tracks. Again, I've denoted that these are 48K. I've also given the tempo of 180 BPM. So let's go ahead and change the tempo. And this isn't really gonna matter all that much, but uh, I'm also gonna change the key here to C minor, because that is the key of the song. It does help to get the key of the song from the artist if you can. So let's go ahead and we're gonna select all of these multi-tracks by holding shift. We're just gonna drag them in here right at bar one and then we're going to create new tracks for this. And it's gonna take a second just to build out those uh, waveform overviews, so we'll give that just a bit. Okay, so I can delete this first track here, and then everything else in here are the multi-tracks. So typically, when I work with clients, this is the best way that I like to receive projects, just each individual instrument on its own mono or stereo track with any unnecessary effects plugins removed. I like to sort of start from scratch and do my own mix from scratch. I don't want to start with something that's already been mixed a bit. And then the other thing I like to do is just start, start to organize these, right? So I've got the bass guitar up here. We've got all of the drums that are labeled with DR. Uh, let's pull the guitars up top here. So we've got all these guitar parts. Let's pull those up to the top above the bass. We've got this sort of intro sound effect. I'll keep that at the bottom. And we've got a bunch of vocals, which I'll bring up to the top, just like so. And then I'm gonna put my lead vocals above the backing vocals. So this song is like a hard rock track. 
with some, you know, metal elements in it as well. There are both clean vocals for the majority of the song, and then there's sort of a breakdown section here, a bridge section, where there's some growled or screamed vocals as well. And so we're going to have two different sets of vocals. We've got these five scream tracks and then these four clean tracks, although we're not going to use all of these vocals all at the same time. But what I am going to do is I'm going to start with just my marquee tool. I'm going to turn off grid snap and I'm just going to do some real like basic heads and tails editing just to kind of clean this up a bit, just like so. We don't need all of this silence in here. And I often find that too, when there's a lot of silence like that, it can kind of make the project a little harder to look at and to work with. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And by the way, all of the guitar parts are all DI. We're going to add Amp Designer to this, uh, and I'll actually use uh, some other Amp Sim plugins later on. And that's, yeah, I think that's about clean enough. Remember, you can click on the background and press Z to zoom out and see everything. For this recording, we did, I think it's 13 channels of, of drums. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, 13 channels of drums. So kick in, kick out, snare top, snare side, toms, 1, 2, and 3. And then I actually did two different sets of overheads because the kit was really wide and had a lot of cymbals on it. So I did a pair of inner overheads and a pair of outer overheads. So I have overhead left and right that are an inner pair and then left and right outer pair. And then I also have uh, stereo room mics that are spaced out uh, pretty wide in the room. And so we may want to pan these stereo pair uh, tracks. So the overhead left and right are just gonna be hard left, hard right. The rooms are also going to be hard left, hard right, as far as they can go, because we're treating these like a stereo recording. And then the inner pairs, we'll just kind of give them a little bit of space, but not too much space. We can always change that later if we want. Uh, for some reason, it's made the input on all of these bus one. So I'm going to go ahead and set that to no input. And so what I'm going to do is just do like a really basic like level and pan mix, just enough so that, you know, we're not clipping uh, the stereo output. Um, so let's go ahead and just pull all of these down, just like so. And the main mics that I like to really come forward are the kick in mic, the snare top mic, to a lesser extent, the snare side, uh, the toms as well. Let's go ahead and pan those left slightly right and then further right. And then for the overheads and rooms, we're really gonna pull those down. And let's see what that sounds like. Go ahead and turn off the metronome and the count in. And you can see we're still clipping a bit there. I'm gonna keep adjusting these levels and the levels may seem super low, but in reality, once we bring everything else in, it's, you know, we're gonna get a lot more gain. So we need to really be kind of conservative about the where those uh, those levels are for now. Let's bring in the bass. Let's jump back here. We're going to jump over to uh, the rhythm guitars here. There are two of them. Now with rhythm guitars, you may you know want to hard pan these, but I find that really leaves the center of the guitar mix kind of exposed and kind of open. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna pan them, but not quite as much. But before I do that, I wanna get like at least some sort of an amp tone on here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add amp designer on here. And let's try to just get kind of like a, a basic distortion setting on here. And one of the things about amp designer too is if you're working with a mono track, there's no version of it to convert to stereo, but with other third-party plugins, there are mono to stereo options. And we'll talk about uh, stereo panning your guitar tracks uh, as opposed to just using the balancers in mono. But for now, at least, this will give us you know, a starting point. So I'll go ahead and hold option and drag that over. And then we'll pull those levels down and pan these over a little to the left and to the right. Actually, quite a bit to the left and right, but not all the way left and right. Now 
There are some guitar leads after the choruses. There's one here and there's one at the end. And then there's a guitar solo here as well. So let's go ahead and just copy that amp setting over to those other tracks. So let's go ahead and pan those a bit as well. a little reverb to the uh, the lead there. We're going to swap out all of these amp tones later, but we'll just use amp designer for now just to have something to work with. Uh, and there's also this like sound effect down here. Yeah, so that doesn't quite have the impact uh, we want yet, but we'll, we will fix that. So what we have are four clean vocal channels five screams and four backing vocals. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take each of these four clean vocals and I'm gonna select them, right click, and we're gonna go down to folder and we're gonna select pack take folder where you can use the shortcut control option command F and that's gonna pack all of those vocal takes into a folder and I'm gonna do the same thing here. So control option command F and we're gonna do the same thing. Let's just do it for this whole section here. There we go. So now I have my lead vocals here. So I'll just say lead, lead vox. And then I've got these empty tracks that I can just delete. And I've got five scream vocals just for the bridge section. So let's pack those in a take folder. And then I've got four backing vocals, which are intended to be, you know, all singing at the same time. Uh, so no need to put these in a take folder. But let's give uh, the vocal a listen here. It's probably gonna be pretty loud. So let's pull these back and let's pull the uh, the backing vocals back quite a bit. I carried your heart when you needed me. That's just how our love was meant to be. And so the backing vocals, I think there's like a, a unison layer. I carried your heart when you needed me. Yeah, that's one in four. So let's put those close together. Hand those out just a little bit. And then I think the other two are like a high, like falsetto. That's just how I love. Yeah, sounds silly now, but once we uh, we get those in the mix, uh, they're going to add like a little more of a character to the uh, to the backing vocals. I carried your heart when you needed me. That's just how our love was. I'm also going to do just a really rough edit here in the take folders just to make sure that I have vocals throughout the entire track. We're going to do a more detailed edit on the vocals using quick swipe comping later in the course. Now that you're sober, don't tell me that it's over. Don't turn this shit And we have our second verse over here. If I stay, would I adore and what would I embrace? Now there is a second chorus over here where we can take these uh, backing vocals and bring them over, but I'm gonna wait until we actually comp the vocals and, and work with the vocals uh, in more depth before I do that. In the bridge section, we've got this sort of bridge breakdown section with some uh, dirty growly vocals here. And then I think over here, this is just one more iteration of the chorus. And then at the end, there were some vocal tags here. So again, not the best vocal takes, but enough where, you know, we can kind of get the idea of, of uh, what we're listening to here. And one last thing I want to do here is I just want to sort of map out the arrangement of the song. I always find it's way easier for me just visually to know where I'm at in the song if I have markers. So I'm just going to go ahead and click here, create a new marker. And by the way, if you don't see markers, you can just press G to open up your global tracks. 
show your marker track by right clicking or control clicking and select marker. And then I can just call this intro this is our first section. I think the song actually comes in at bar six here. So I'll just call this intro sound effect. And then at bar six, I'll call this like the, the true intro to the song. And by the way, I'm using the left and right uh, greater than less than bracket keys to move left and right one bar at a time. And you can hold shift and press these keys to jump around eight bars at a time. Uh, these are also the comma and period keys, by the way. Okay, so when we get to the end of the intro here. Now that you're sober. And that's gonna be our first verse. So we'll call this verse one. And I think this song uses a pretty standard like eight bar phrasing. There is no pre-chorus in this song, so we'll just call this chorus. So at 69 there, that's sort of like a, I don't know, post-chorus or like an instrumental riff uh, section or lead section. So I'm just going to call this instrumental riff. Let's move over. Oh, and then there's a solo too, yeah. So 85, that's our guitar solo. So we'll add that in. And then over here, I think, is our second verse. Yeah, it's a pickup, so I'll go ahead and add in a marker here for verse two. 16 bars over, we have our chorus again. And then the end of the second chorus brings us into the breakdown or bridge section. We'll call that right there. Right where that uh, guitar riff comes in. We'll call that the bridge breakdown and then that brings us through the bridge breakdown section and then we come back into the chorus again And there's our final chorus. And then there's one more section. We'll call it an outro, but it's essentially the instrumental riff again, which is right here. So let's go ahead and add that in. We'll call this outro. And there is a shortcut to create markers if you don't want to, uh, you know, constantly have to go and, and keep clicking the plus button. You can just press control option apostrophe and that'll create a new marker, and then you can double click to uh, to name that marker. Uh, let's go ahead and colorize our markers. You can press Option C to bring up your color palette. Just select a marker and then select the color you want. You can also hold Shift and select multiple markers and then select a color if you want multiple markers to be the same color. And what I like to do is I like to just see the marker tracks. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide the arrangement, tempo, signature and chord tracks so then i just see that marker track okay so that wraps up this video in the next video we're going to move on to working with the drums double checking them for phase issues uh, fixing time alignment issues and eventually we'll get to drum replacement and sample layering and mixing the drum kit I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.